Hey guys, welcome to another episode of my channel. My name is Tuscany, and today I'm going to show you how to make some candles. So grab something to drink, and let's get started. So we've been watching all of the How to Train Your Dragon movies, which I love, and Toothless is amazing and I want one. And that's all. But my outfit is very uh, Viking inspired today, but I promise to get back to my usual vintage soon. I was just too lazy to put curlers in my hair. Anyway, let's get started on some candle making. I wanted to show you guys how to use old candles and repurpose them. And I don't know if this is a thing in your family, but in mine, we used to put candles on a hot plate or something that would just melt it slowly. And there was like this point in time that people thought that the aroma would be better if it just melted rather than being burned. And so we have all these candles that have no wicks in them because the wicks disappeared <laughs> because they were just continuously being melted on a hot plate rather than being burned with a flame. So now I have these candles that have no wicks and there's just there's just a ball of wax and I want to repurpose them. Uh, now this can work um, with obviously anything. If you have candles that are in jars that you don't like or uh, you want to mix two scents together or anything like that, uh, just take some old candles and put them. I have this hot plate over here that I put them on and I'm going to just get that started right now because it does take a while to melt that much wax. But you can also melt them on the stove. Uh, just make sure that it's really at the lowest temperature possible on the stove and let it sit there for a while. If you have um, a gas stove then I would recommend not doing that unless you have one of those metal plates that are meant to disperse the heat elsewhere, like disperse the heat all over the bottom. Um, but if you don't have one of those and you have a gas stove, then I would recommend not doing this. So I'm gonna just get this started, get that rolling, and we're going to move on to how to make candles from just a bag of wax. So this is just a simple bag of soy wax. I prefer soy wax. I don't know why. I just feel like it's better for me. I don't know. Um, I got this at Michael's. It's a four pound bag that I got for $22, but I got it with a 50% off coupon. So that was awesome. Um, and then I also picked up a couple cents. You can get uh, just one scent. I got two that I want to mix together or you can just do no scents. Um, and then I have this pot that I got from Goodwill, uh, though I do believe Bed Bath & Beyond sells these. And it's awesome because it has a little pour spout and I can sit it on the stove on the lowest setting and get that to melt properly and it's not dangerous because it's not glass. So. We're gonna start with getting some wax into the pan. And once it's melted, we're gonna let it sit for a minute and then we can add in the scents. So with the flakes, you want to be careful because it's, well, I mean, it's not that important, but they are quite fluffy in flake form and if you measure it out to the exact you know amount that you want you're gonna lose a lot so what I do is I just get a nice covering on the bottom and then I start melting that and I keep adding flakes until the melted amount is exactly what I want so we're gonna go ahead and get this on the stove on melt and it's going to sit there for 10-15 minutes until it is thoroughly melted. 
If you find that that is not enough wax once it is completely melted, then like I said, add a bit more, let it melt, and keep doing that until you reach the amount that you want. So while my wax is melting, I want to talk about the jars that I got for a sec. The jars that I got are all from Goodwill, and that's a great option to get, you know, used jars. Most of them don't have lids, but obviously that's not a problem for candles. I did manage to find a couple with lids, and I think they look really cute if you can find those. Um, but if you can't, then it's really no big deal because it's not like the candle's just going to fall out of the jar. To prepare the jars before you put a candle in it, I just like to clean them first. It's just a nice clean base, and since they are from Goodwill, I want to get anything off there that could be on there. And then from there, you can just put a wick in it and move on. But I like to put some detail on the side of the glass, and since I often go foraging for stuff for my fire starters, and if you did not see that video, then I'll put a link to it right here. Uh, but I like to go get things, you know, wood, uh, lichen, different kinds of plants, and I really like to find birch bark. I think it's beautiful and it can be used on cards and, um, and candles and all this stuff that I think it looks really nice and it gives it a nice rustic natural feel to it. So what I do is I put some birch bark on the inner glass and I glue it on so that the wax can't seep in around it. Once your birch is in there and dry or whatever you put in there or if you decide to put nothing in there then we can go ahead and get our wick in and that's just a matter of gluing it on. I also want to take a second to talk about scent. If you don't want scent that's perfectly fine just skip this step but if you do then what you want to do is take the weight of the wax that you have melted and then take six to ten percent of that weight and put it in its scent. Uh, now, I don't have a scale, so that makes it a lot harder to base it on weight. So what I'm going to do is base it on some math and some guesstimating. Alright, my wax is melted and ready to go. I'm going to let that cool for a sec while I get my scents ready. And what I did to figure out how much scent I want to put into my wax is I have about a cup of liquid wax here and one cup is 48 teaspoons multiply 48 by 6 percent or 0 0.06 and that gives you a number of 2.88 so therefore 2.88 teaspoons so i'm actually going to start with just one teaspoon and then i'll try out two teaspoons and we'll see how it goes okay now that we have our wax ready to go and the jar ready to go, we can put them together. I can put in my little wick thing, though I don't think I need it because the wick is so short. If you have a longer wick, then this is necessary, but I'll use it because it's fun. Why not? And then go ahead and just pour in the wax. Yeah, that was necessary. <laughs> and let it dry. And if you'd like, at this stage, you can put in some decoration. I like to add just a couple little sprigs of something, just to add some interest to the top of the candle. But don't add too much because then it will uh, combust. <laughs> if you do want to go foraging for some stuff to put into your candles, or fire starters. Once again, I did a video on that last week, so check it out right here. Uh, then that's wonderful. I think foraging is a great way to get some materials. It's free and it's fun. However, do be careful of taking too much. Just take a few things from each place that you go and leave the rest to, you know, contribute to that ecosystem. So now that we have these done, which were made from the soy wax flakes, we can move on to how to recycle wax from existing candles. So now that I've had my old candle on here for a while and the wax is melted, we can go ahead and just pour it into whatever jar that we want. And 
that's really about it. If it's a scented candle, then obviously you don't have to work with scent. If it's not a scented candle, then you can either put scent in it or not. And then you can just get it in the jar that already has the wick in it and let it cool and you have a candle. But I'm gonna try something a little bit special today and it's gonna be a lot of experimenting, so stick with me. I'm gonna try to have a two-tone candle that's one color in the center and a different color on the outside. All right, so for this kind of jar, I'm gonna try something a little bit different. I have a toilet paper roll here and I punched out some holes and they're right across from each other and at the same height. And that's important to try to get it as straight as possible. Then I have some foil here and what we're gonna do is wrap the toilet paper roll in foil. We're gonna cut around the top And then I'm going to take some tape and just tape off the foil to the uh, toilet paper roll. Now I'm going to just cut through the tape so that I can get through that hole. And I'm going to poke just a really small hole in the bottom. Alright, so I got my jar and I got my wick stuck in the bottom of it. And after that, I'm going to get that hole that I put at the bottom of the foil and just slide it over the wick. Then I'm going to take a skewer or any form of stick and slide it through those holes at the top. And just make sure that roll is completely centered in the jar. So now that this contraption is all set, we're gonna actually just pour the wax in and around this right here. And I went ahead and transferred my wax to this because it has a spout, which will make this a lot easier. If you start to notice that the wax starts to come up through the hole that we made in the foil for the wick, then stop and let the inside cool before you keep going. All right, that is full and I'm gonna just set it aside while I work on some other things. So for this jar, my first step was just to put the wick in and put a small layer of white wax on the bottom. So for this container, I want to use the muffin tin to help create a wax patty basically that I'm gonna stick in here. But I need to make room for the wick. So what I did was I taped the straw to the muffin tin. Whoop. And as you can tell, it's not very sturdy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a very small layer of wax on the bottom and let it cool while I hold the straw in place. Then I can fill it up the rest of the way. But I'm only going to fill it up maybe three quarters so that it can fit into this jar. Alright, so that first little layer of wax I put in is cool, so I'm going to just go ahead and add the rest. And there it is. Now once again, I gotta let that cool entirely before I can take it out, and I'll just wiggle the straw out with it, and then we can flip it over and put it in the jar. All right, so this is nice and cool, so I'm gonna pop it out. And then I'm gonna get the straw out. Oh, that went really smoothly, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and do one more because I'm making two candles from this. And while that is cooling, I can go ahead and take a look at this one, flip it over on here, kind of push that down in there, and then fill that hole with some extra wax. This one is also cool, so I'm going to go ahead and take the tape off, pull the toilet paper roll out. So as you can see, there was some wax that got on it, but that's why we want to use uh, something that is a bit more malleable like this, so, so that you can kind of crunch it up and pull it out. And then same with the foil. So this one definitely isn't as clean as the other one, but it doesn't matter because you're not going to see it. Just to make sure this is completely cool before I add the green to the inside, I'm going to put this in the freezer for about five minutes. So this is thoroughly chilled and I'm going to go ahead and put the green wax in the center before the white wax cools. 
because I want the white wax to cool the green wax before the hot wax can melt this. And then, once again, we get to let it cool. Now that I got the green wax patties into the jars, I'm gonna pop it into the freezer to make sure it's cool. Candles can be a super easy project. However, if you're doing layers like this, then do be aware of all the time that it takes because you need to cool each layer before you put another layer in. Okay, these have all been chilling in the freezer and I can now go ahead and fill them up with wax. All right, these are all good to go. I just need to trim the wick and they'll be done. So there you have some finished candles, but I'm giving them as a gift, so I'll show you how I wrap them. For this piece, you're gonna need some extra fabric. You can also get the small squares of fabric from your local craft store or fabric store. Um, we're gonna need some paper, just some, you know, paper from the recycling or uh, not important paper. Always recycle when possible. <laughs> um, you're gonna need your jar. I have a circle cutter, but it's not necessary. You can always just, you know, make your own compass with string uh, and a pen or uh, cut it by hand or free, free hand it. Yeah. So I'm gonna take my jar and measure it on my nifty circle cutter and I want the circle that I'm making to be about a half to a three quarters inch over the circle of the jar. Alright, so that one goes down to about where I want it. Now I'm going to fold this in quarters. I'm going to get my fabric. Oh, look at that. I'm just going to cut a square out that I know fits that circle. Once that's done, fold this into quarters. And line up the inner corner of the circle with the inner corner of the square. In it and then just cut this line out of the fabric. And I just want to make sure this line is cut cleanly because I'm going to do a hem around it but I'm not going to fold it under. So I just want to make it as clean as possible beforehand. So I went ahead and did a hem on the side and then I ironed the circle. So now we can just take our candle. I like to bend the wick over, place the circle on top, make sure it's fairly centered. And then for me, I think it's easiest to slip a rubber band over it. And then tie twine underneath it. And just trim the ends. Slip the rubber band off. If you can grab it. Kind of push down the sides. You can also try to slip the twine down just a little bit. And there you have it, a nice little wrap for your candle. So there you have it, some super easy candles that you can either keep for yourself or give as a gift. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, then give it a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in more videos like this, then please subscribe. Have a happy November, and I'll see y'all next time.